Good evening, I'm Madison Carmouche. As freezing temperatures continue, so does our first alert weather day. Snowfall has ended, but with the cold temperatures lingering, the snow isn't melting quite yet. Meteorologist Shane Smith has more on what to expect as we close out the weekend and head into next week. Shane? Well, Madison, we are seeing bitter cold temperatures across the mountains tonight, and with that comes the potential of some dangerous wind chills. That's why we're keeping our first alert weather day going into Sunday, and that is because wind chills could drop to 10 to 15 degrees below zero tomorrow morning. In fact, the actual air temperature may go below zero even more so than it is right now. Monticello, you're at 10 below zero right now. Burr is all I have to say to that. In fact, uh, the other morning, Monticello was the coldest spot in the lower 48. I believe that was uh, Friday morning. Just absolutely unreal cold uh, moving in. Eight right now, Jackson. Seven in hazard. Factor in the wind, we are down to a wind chill of zero in Jackson. Six below zero. And why? So uh, just know it is a cold night. Wind chill advisory out for most of the area, and those wind chills are going to be bitterly cold tonight. It's definitely a night uh, to bring the pets in, open up the cabinets, circulate that heat under the uh, sinks, run the faucet just a drip because it's just going to be so, so cold. And then we're doing the cold again on Monday to a lesser extent, single digit wind chills instead of below zero. But either way, that's the kind of cold that can cause frostbite and hypothermia in 30 minutes to an hour. So you definitely want to bundle up, dress in layers, and as we mentioned, uh, run that trickle of water. Also, be very careful with those space heater friends. Um, a lot of fires can start by not using those properly. So keep it away from flammable items and never use a stove or oven to heat up the house. Now, we have got warmer weather on the way. We're going to pay a price for it. We'll talk about what that is here in a few minutes, Madison. All right, Shane, thank you. With those freezing temperatures, some people in Floyd County are without water. WYMT's RJ Johnson shares how first responders are helping during this time. With Arctic-like temperatures, frozen pipes, and a water line break, first responders in Floyd County are working to help people without water. Well, right now, I think Maytown uh, Fire Department, Garrett, Martin, Wayland uh, has shown up and picked up water to hand out. Uh, I know Maytown is set up right now doing it at the same time as we're open today to hand out. Melinda Eastep with the Garrett Volunteer Fire Department says they are working to hand out water to those in need. Right now we have two pallets of water, two full pallets. We've loaded off onto a trailer when we brought it in last night because it was so heavy and didn't want it to, you know, fall over or whatever. Um, but we have it down stacked down here on the trailer for people to come in. As they're trying to look out for their community. We're handing out supplies, water, food, um, things we could do to help. And that's what we're here for. That's what the fire department's here to help. I mean, we go out to do the emergencies and the fires, but we're also here to help in day to day life if we can, if there's a way to. She says it is important to reach out to loved ones during this time. Biggest thing is just remember to check on your neighbors. You may have water, but the neighbor down the road next door or down the street may not have it. So just keep a check on, especially if they're elderly, to make sure that they have what they need. And if not, then contact your emergency management people or contact somebody at the fire department. Um, we'll do the best we can to help. In Floyd County, RJ Johnson, WYMT Mountain News. East Step says to reach out to them if you or anyone you know is in need. And officials with the City of Hazard Utilities report several water outages in parts of Perry County. Hard Burley, Lots Creek, Leatherwood, and Left Fork Mesa's Creek are affected by the outage. Officials say tank management in those areas is impacted by the freezing temperatures. They add they are working to get all of the leaks repaired. As temperatures continue to drop throughout the night and into tomorrow, it's important to make sure your pets are safe and warm. Veterinarian Dr. William Haggins says the limit to limit the amount of time your pet spends outdoors while some may be staying home due to treacherous road conditions. It is crucial to make sure you have plenty of food and medicine for your pets. 
Hagen says if your pet has a shelter outdoors, it must be adequate and able to block the wind. Just having wood around something with big gaps in it, it's, it's not acceptable. Make sure that it's adequate, all right? Make sure that they have food and water, plenty of, and make sure that that water is at least warm. Um, well, I don't want to take it out hot because it just basically freeze a lot faster, but make sure that that water itself isn't frozen, all right? You break it up if you have to, make sure that they constantly have access to that. Hagen says to check on decolorization at the tips of ears or at their paws for frostbite. Cold temperatures can bring cold related injuries like frostbite or even hypothermia. So before you head outside to shovel some snow or before you send your kids outside to play, there are some safety tips to keep in mind. Dr. Fox, a physician in Lexington says as for frostbite, it is commonly seen on your hands, feet, nose and ears. Frostbite is more of a tissue injury. You know, your body's made up of a lot of water, so some of the water starts to freeze in your body. Hypothermia is the whole body is affected. The body's core temperature drops. I mean, you think you have to be out a long time to get frostbite. In this kind of weather we're having now, you, it could be 10, 15 minutes, and you can have tissue damage depending on your exposure. He adds the signs for frostbite and hypothermia aren't always clear. Lexington fire crews spent most of the day at 84 Lumber fighting what they call a once in a decade fire. Reports of a fire at 84 Lund Lumber in Lexington came in at 2 a.m. Saturday morning. Due to the number of combustible materials and the rate at which they were burning, fire crews upgraded the severity of the response twice. Crews say these bitterly cold temperatures create a whole new set of challenges when it comes to putting out fires like this one. The water meant to put out the fire created a thick sheet of ice surrounding the scene, causing firefighters to slip and fall and even freezing trucks to the ground. When they got here, it was negative one with a negative 11 wind chill. So obviously we're fighting fire with water that's going to freeze to the ground. You're going to have lines trucks that actually freeze to the ground. Uh, once they froze to the ground, we have to bring out heaters. On top of the challenges created by the weather, Roberts says part of the main building collapsed before crews could even make entry. The fire department is still investigating the cause of the fire. We'll be right back after this break. 